Hey, <clears throat> so um, I showed you those videos specifically to, um, sorry that this lecture is in two pieces, guys. Um, it's frustrating, but um, so I showed you those three works specifically to, um, to point to the way that performance has really come to be the art practice that deals most directly with positionality. Um, all of you uh, have done a very great job of kind of identifying who you are as makers and more broadly who you are as political entities in our culture. Um, it seems like a pretty rudimentary question, but it's something that um, really needs to be teased out when you deal with authorship. And yes, given the conversation that is teased out by Foucault uh, on what is an author, you know, the idea of of your political identity becoming overwhelmingly a part of the read or reception of your work does seem to be a bit flawed, um, and it is. And so I'm not saying that we should look at all work and think only about who made it and and what the color of their skin is or like what how they present themselves as a gender identity in our culture, because that's not that's not interesting. That's, there's more expansive ways to look at artwork. But it is one of the ways that people will look at your artwork if they are thinking about things on those lines for that particular day, you know? Or if they're that kind of critic. We still have a lot of critics who are dealing with gender identity or uh, cultural identity as a way of talking about the self um, and culture more broadly. But that's another story. But anyway, so these three different films represent... Um, kind of the trifecta of varying ways that you can, that performance has done this, that ha it has become the voice box of positional conversations. And so the first was the Marina Abramovich method as performed by Lady Gaga. Um, and I do understand that there is a little bit of tongue in cheek there with my presentation of that because you have this pop star doing this um, work or this method by effectively another art pop star um, and so there is a little bit of ridiculousness there but um, I show you that to point to this kind of institutional reception for, per, for performance art. Abramovich and her kind of performance style a nude body in space presented as a thing that um, has both spiritual and psychological power and authority over its audience, um, that has won. That has really caught the eye of a lot of institutions. And there are a lot of female performance artists who employ this kind of method as a way of presenting their work. It's kind of um, a trajectory or historical school has developed around that. And I do want to say that there is a, there are more female performance artists who operate like that um, when it comes to male performance artists, you're not entirely, it's not entirely the thing of queer people, um, but there are a lot of queer performance artists who identify as male authors. Jake Diebler being one of them. And I showed you uh, a work of his um, that I saw in New York. Uh, I thought it was one of the more successful performance pieces because it was so it was far enough away from this kind of standardized trope of the Abramovich way or the Abramovich method, um, but it still acknowledges that historical importance. And